So let me take you through an account where I need to create these custom labels and I will be sharing my screen. Um, now, Google does give us some options to split the products by categories. However, none of, none of those options are really feasible for me right now. Guys, I'm Riddhi. Hi guys, I'm Pressy, and we're both account managers at Solutions 8. Today we've got an interesting video for you guys and we're going to talk about custom labels. But before we dive into how we can create custom labels, let's talk about what are custom labels and why we use them. Um, custom labels are nothing but tags that we add to our products that help us to group them. Um, now this can be done based on various factors such as colors and sizes, uh, even product prices, etc. Um, we can use these custom labels when we want to split our shopping or performance max campaigns uh, by products and we want to do that for better performance. So let me take you through an account where I need to create these custom labels and I will be sharing my screen. Just a second. All right. So here's the account where I want to be setting custom setting up custom labels. Um, so this is a client that sells apparel. Uh, the apparel ranges from tops, tunics, shirts, uh, cardigans, dresses, etc. Now I currently just have one Performance Max campaign in here, and I want I I plan to have separate Performance Max campaigns. Uh, for those specific product categories. Um, now, Google does give us some options to split the products by categories. However, none of, none of those options are really feasible for me right now. So, uh, okay, as you can see here, each of my asset groups have all the products added within them. And if I try to subdivide them, the only options I have are very restricting to what I plan to do. So I choose to use custom labels. Uh, if we go into custom label zero, so ideally when you have a brand new account with zero custom labels, you shouldn't see any of these here. Uh, the reason why you see them here is because I've already set these up in my Google Merchant Center account. So I, I'm going to take you through how I've set these up, right? So let's jump into Google Merchant Center. Here it is. We head on to, head on to products and then over to feeds. All right. Now my... Uh, accounts feed has been set up through content API. So we enter, uh, so we go into the content API and wait for it to load. All right, now we click on feed rules. So this is a way of creating custom labels, which is through feed rules, All right? Um, as you see here, we've already got a few of these custom labels set up. Now, what I wanna do is set up a new one to show you guys how I did it. Um, so Google gives you four, uh, five different custom labels ranging from zero to four. You can use them uh, however you like. So in our, in my case, I already have about three or four of them currently used. So what I want to do is set up custom label four, which is the last one I have. So what I do is I click on plus, and this is where we choose the attribute that we're going to change. So the attribute that we change is custom label four. Right, like I said, there's zero, one, two, three, and four. So I want to change the fourth custom label. So I click on this. Now, once you do this, you have this window that pops up. Uh, this is where you have uh, different conditions that you can set, you know, in order to change those uh, labels. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on conditions. And the first condition that I have is true is to edit my custom label four based on the title. So in this example, it's pretty simple. My products already have the specific categories in the title. So if it's a tunic, the title contains the word tunic. So all I'm going to do is click on the condition here, which is going to be title. And once I do that, I will have the option of adding, uh, selecting these uh, from the drop down bar. Uh, so I'm going to select title contains and I'm going to type in what term I want to make sure it is. So it is tunic in this case. Okay, so this is case sensitive. So you want to make sure that you're using the correct case that is in your title. So in this case, it's tunic. I'm going to click on add value tunic. Once you do this, you click on set to. Now this is where we assign a specific value. So what is the value that I want to assign to my custom label for? 
uh, wherein the title contains the term tunic. So the, the term that I'm going to assign is going to be tunic itself. So I know that this category is going to be tunic. Now we click on OK. All right, so I did this only for one product here. I'm going to show you one more. So every time you want to create a different category, you want to make sure that you go back and do the whole thing again. So I click on title. In this case, I'm going to say title contains dress. And again, make sure that the case is correct. And then the title is going to be set to dress. OK. All right, so once you've got the setup, um, you can add these up to whatever product types you have. Now, I have um, multiple product categories, but just for this example, I'm going to show you just two of these. Now, once you do this, you click on Save as Draft. Okay. You will, if you scroll down here, you will be able to see the feed rule that you've just set. This is the old one that I had set up, but the new one that I set up is over here. Okay. So now, we have two options or two things that we can do here. One is to test the changes that you've just made, where Google will create a report to show you what has been changed. Uh, but if you click on this, it's going to take up to from 10 to 20 minutes. And I, I have already done this in the past, so I'm not going to test it. But you can definitely go ahead and do that. All I'm going to do is click on Apply. OK, now once you've applied it, you can go back to your products and refresh the page. This might take like from 30 seconds to a minute sometimes. So we're just going to wait for that to change in here. Now, when you look at your all products window, you want to open these uh, columns and modify the columns to include the column that you have just edited. So in my case, it was custom label four. So I have just added this to my columns and I click on apply. You will see a custom label four column added over here. So we, we still have um, the, the products have not yet loaded. So I'm just going to search the title that contains tunic. And we wait for it to load. I'm going to refresh it once again, because sometimes Google takes kind of longer to refresh the data. OK, there you go. So I have more than one tunic. So Google is obviously loading it a little at a time. So there you go. You see the custom label 4 has been added as tunic. If I click on dress, I should be seeing dress as my custom label 4. Um, if you don't see it, just wait for it to load for a few minutes, and it should be there. Um, now, once this is done, my segments have been created. You go back into Google, but uh, the thing to remember here is that Google takes about 30 minutes, uh, approximately 30 minutes, to get the data from, to fetch the data from your merchant center back into your Google Ads account. But once you have the, the custom labels added here, all you can do is simply click on the categories that you want to that you want to split the campaign by. And then you click on Save. And you should see your product categories as subdivisions over here in your Google Ads account. And yeah, that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, we, we can just create custom labels by setting up feed rules. Now, you have various options of setting up feed rules. You can select them um, by your, uh, like I said, you can do that by color if, if that's something you want to distinguish your campaigns by. Or you can do them even through um, sizes, et cetera, and prices too. So whatever options you have here, you just need to click on your uh, attribute and the attribute that you want to uh, condition that particular custom label by, and that's it. Now, there is another way of setting up custom labels, which is something that Riddhi will talk about. And Riddhi, you can take it away. So now I'm going to show you the another way how to create custom labels using supplemental feed. Let me share my screen. Now, I have a client who is selling shoes, different types of shoes ranging from sneakers to stilettos to heels to boots. Now, my use case is to create a Sunday shopping campaign containing the top sellers. Now, how do I do that? I have create, I've downloaded the feed from Merchant Center. These are the products which have performed well in the past. Now, I need to add these products in my new campaign. 
So to create supplemental feed, we'll go to the merchant center, scroll down, you'll see a section for supplemental feed. We'll click on add supplemental feed. And now you have the option to name your feed. I will be naming my feed as top performing. Okay, sorry. Products. Now I am selected Google Sheets. Click on continue. We have the option of either creating a new spreadsheet or using an existing one. I'm going to go with creating a new Google spreadsheet. Click on continue. This supplemental feed will be applied to my primary, which I'm selecting content API. Create feed, authorize, and wait for Google Merchant Center to create a spreadsheet for me. Okay. Now you can see, if you scroll down, the feed I have created is already here. I'm going to click on open. Right now, this feed is blank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the IDs, paste in here, all right, and create a new column for custom label zero. I have not applied any custom labels right now, so I'm going to start with zero and name this as top sellers. Apply to all products. Now, this is done. My strategy is ready. I'm going to hop back into my merchant center and click here. Now, the thing is, I'm going to fetch the feed now. It's going to take some time while the feed is processing. Okay, now you can see. It has already applied. There were almost 1,000 plus products. Now this is there. In order to check that, I'm going to go back to my all products. See if I have custom label column selected. Yeah, it's there. And sorted by custom label. Now you can see for the products, I have the custom label set as top seller. The next step would be to hop into back my campaign. Go to the product groups, click on subdivision and move from product IDs to custom label. Now, again, this is going to take some time in order to populate in Google, which is uh, from Google Merchant Center to your campaign. So that is the last step. Now, uh, if you want to, if you have, if your feed is set up through, if your primary feed is set up to content API and you need to uh, refresh your feed what you can do is you can refresh your supplemental feed that will automatically fetch your products in your re refresh your products in the primary feed all right and that's it that was as easy and if you like this uh do continue watching and subscribe to our channel hope you have a good day thanks bye bye, bye. shopping and feed optimizations. So Google has a hierarchy. The hierarchy is what influences the campaign to optimize essentially against inbound search traffic. So for the most part,